Well, good morning, beloveds. I'm so glad to be back again with you. And you know, it's good to start the morning off with an attitude of gratitude. And I say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Oh, I'm so glad we woke up to God's mercies this morning and his loving kindness. And I'm going to get into the scripture very quickly, but let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindnesses to us. Thank you, O oh God, for watching over us and keeping us through the night to allow us to come to this moment, O oh Lord. And as we look into your word, we ask you, Lord, that you will open your word to us, your children. We need your word, O oh God, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, O oh God. It is strength, O oh God. It defeats, oh God, the voice of the enemy, oh God, and oppression and depression, oh God. Oh God, we just thank you for your word. It's a blessing to us, oh God. And we ask you, oh Lord, that even as we go forth this day to our different destinations, oh God, our workplaces, oh God, and other assignments we may have throughout this day, be with us, guide us, and keep us. And even those we separate from, oh God, that we might gather collectively at the end of this day and give thanks unto you because you are good. And we thank you, Father. And we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. As we, I go to uh, the book of Isaiah, I want to go to the 49th chapter, and I just want to read a couple of verses very quickly, uh, 49, and I'm going to read verses 15 and 16, and they read, can a woman forget her nursing child? that she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget. Verse 16, Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. My goodness. In this, in this chapter, the 49th chapter that I was reading this morning, um, uh, I see that Isaiah is speaking to the people of God, the children of God, who are in captivity. This is the southern kingdom, the divided kingdom of Israel, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. And uh, the northern kingdom went into captivity, Assyrian captivity, and now it's the southern kingdom's turn. They have gone. Eventually, they fell, went the way of the northern kingdom. They lasted a little longer, uh, but they eventually went into captivity, Babylonian captivity. And they're looking at things and they're seeing how the walls of Jerusalem are laid to waste. Everything is down. Everything looks gloomy. Everything looks hopeless to them. Uh, they are in captivity and they're saying and they're accusing God uh, that he is forsaken them, that he has forgotten all about them, you know, and that he's not going to uh, restore them. And, you know, they also forget that they are there by their own devices, that the reason they're there is because of their own sins, because they didn't heed the warnings of the prophets. When the northern kingdom went into captivity, they didn't learn a lesson from that. They went the way uh, of forsaking God, of not obeying the God of what he had told them to do, uh, and, and the warnings didn't help. They just became worse until things declined so bad that the only way to turn them around and to save Israel uh, and the plan of God was to put them into captivity under their rulers. And so that left them in a state uh, thinking that God had forsaken them. But God didn't forsake them. And he's talking to them through Isaiah and says, listen, can a mother forget her suckling son, the, the son that she nursed at her breast uh, with no compassion and no regard? And then he says, they may. That possibly could happen. But I am not them. And then he speaks to them in what we call anthropomorphic terms by uh, using uh, some human uh words that they can understand or a figure of speech that they could understand to tell them something about him. He says, I can't forget you. Your presence is ever before me because I have engraved your name on the palm of my hand. And you know, your palms are ever before you. You're always using your hands. Uh, you have the ability to use your hands and they open and you use them in an open position. 
And he says, every time, in a sense, I open my hands. Your name is there. I can't help but see you. You're always there before me to give them a sense of how close he is to them and how they, he has not forsaken them, that he knows where they are, he knows who they are, and despite the condition of things, that he is yet with them and that he's going to restore them, that he's going to bring them out. Just like they went in, he's going to bring them out. And so that was to give them a sense of hope and to understand that their God, their their loving God is better than a mother who has suckling children at her breast, that he says, I will not and have not forgiven gotten you that you are coming out so that was to give them hope to make it through and so uh, I thought about the hope that he gave them and you know I said we have that hope too God has given us so much hope that he says that he will you know never leave us nor forsake us that he'd be with us always in the 28th chapter of Matthew at the end, his final words of encouragement was like, lo, surely I am with you always, even into the end of the age, I will be there. And you know, the Lord is ever present with us, regardless of where you may be this morning, no matter what your situation is or whatever you woke up to, the Lord is there. Just as he was with Israel in captivity unto the restoration of them, the Lord was always there. And he was even there to protect a group to bring them out so that when they would come out, they would come out in great numbers even. So uh, the Lord knew what was going on and had a plan all the while. And no matter where you may be this morning, the Lord has a plan for you, no matter how hopeless. You may be like the Israelites who think that the Lord has forsaken you, but he has not forsaken you. He may seem distant. You don't feel his nearness. And uh, maybe it's because we, sometimes we don't feel this nearness when we haven't spent time with the Lord, uh, when we're not praying, you know, uh, or seeking him as we should. Uh, th sometimes the, the less we do those things, those disciplines, the less we feel his presence. It's not that he has moved. We have moved. Just like the children of Israel are talking about God forsaking them. He never forsook them. He was always there, but they were the ones who were backslidden and backed away from him. And so they couldn't uh, feel him or see him. And that's when they started to go off into disobedience and worshiping and serving other gods and running after the lusts of their own flesh. And so they wound up in that state. But you know what? The Lord has told us that he will never leave us or forsake us. So if anybody goes, it would be us that would be the ones to leave him. But he said, he won't leave us. I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. He was saying that and leaving those words of encouragement. And regardless of what our anxieties or fears are this morning. He even tells us in Matthew, the sixth chapter and uh, the 33rd and 34th verse, so familiar to us. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto us. He says, so therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. In other words, God is saying, don't look so far ahead and worry. Now, let me say this. He's not saying don't plan for tomorrow, but don't be anxious and nervous about tomorrow because it will have troubles of its own. But trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in what I will do. I care for you. And he uses so many examples about showing them the lilies of the field, how they neither toil, you know, nor work, or the birds of the air, how, you know, he, their heavenly father, he takes care of them. And he says, aren't you more than a sparrow? God is going to take care of you too. So he doesn't want you to be stressed out and depressed and oppressed about things, but to trust in the Lord. Even when we uh, make mistakes, even when we don't do those things, sometimes in a moment we make uh, rash decisions and judgments, you know, that can get us into trouble, but the Lord is still a restorer. The Lord can still and will bring you out if you seek him, if you go after him, because we are ever before him. And you know what, for the believer has the Holy Spirit abiding on him on the inside. So the presence of the Lord is with you. You are never out of the presence of the Lord. Even David the psalmist said, where can I go from the presence of the Lord? 
there's nowhere I can go. If I take the wings of the morning and descend up to the highest heights, he's there. And if I made my bed in hell, he's still there. So you can't go anywhere that the Lord doesn't see and know where you are at all times. <laughs> so that should give you a great consolation to know that you know you're not forsaken and you are never alone you may feel alone it may be lonely where you are because of nowhere but you know what i tell you to do is to rejoice in the lord spend time in the lord talk to the lord and see if the lord through the holy spirit doesn't speak back to you and when you begin to praise god it will build you up in the most holy faith and give you that joy unspeakable that's full of glory and that passes all understanding. <laughs> oh, what a blessed father that we have that loves his children and will not forsake us. Even after we forsake him, he will not forsake us. So I pray that these scriptures that you will think about throughout this day, that you will ponder on them no matter what you may be going through or no matter what you may be facing, that you will know that you are not alone, that the Lord, he is with you. Your father loves you so dearly. And that he wants you to know, just as he told the Israelites, his people, even they, though they were in captivity, even though they had suffered different things by their own means that they did this, but even still, he was with them. He saw them and he knew them. And he's saying, oh, I'm going to bring you out. This is not the end. It's not over. That's why you can never throw in the towel or give up too soon because you don't know uh, what's going to happen down the line. It's like the older folks used to say in the church, I think I'm going to run on and see what the end is going to be. Because you know what? The end of a thing can be greater and better than the beginning of a thing. So I pray that these scriptures will inspire you, encourage you uh, this day and this week in the Lord. God bless you.